What's up, ladies and gentlemen? Aaron Nix from the WrestleBlog podcast, and I am back to discuss AEW Dynamite, which was very sensible. This was a very strange episode of Dynamite. So with AEW, I've kind of grown used to their idiot shenanigans and stuff. Not all of it. I hate, obviously. Uh, some of it I really like. I like her. I do like my share of shenanigans. It has to be said, but. AW normally tends to do things a little bit more fruity, shall we say. A lot more flips and stuff like that. Not this week, though. It's almost like someone got a hold of it and said, right, we're going to be very serious this week. No nonsense. Just go out there, have good matches, and don't do anything else. Don't upset Jim Cornette. Don't upset the internet. <laughs> okay, fair enough. I guess Girl on Cinema and Jim Cornette need a week off. So they decided to just not goof about. Uh, it was just a really straight-laced, simple, effective show. Show opened with a good match. Kenny Omega, the champion, versus Matt Seidel. Not really sure why he's wrestling Matt Seidel. By the way, Don Callis is so stupid on commentary. I swear he's deliberately being retarded. Because he, he's, he's sitting on commentary. He's like, oh, isn't it nice of Kenny Omega to give this young lad <laughs> an opportunity? He's... Older than Kenny Omega and have been in the business as long, if not much longer. I know that's the idea. I just thought it was quite funny, actually. I do find Don Callis very amusing at the best of times. Um, and he does a very good job of being the sycophant manager. So I appreciate that. Have to say, though, um, although the match, there was nothing offensive about it. It went on a bit too long for me. I was like, hmm, I get it. Like... The thing is, Matt Seidel hasn't really done anything since he slipped up on the top turnbuckle, with all due respect. And I do love Matt Seidel, and I know Aaron Cruz is watching going, Praise my favourite wrestler! Um, but I just didn't care. And I'm sitting here thinking, I don't like your champion anyway. He looks like an Elton John cosplayer at the best of times, especially when he dresses up. Why is he going 15, 20 minutes with Matt Seidel? Oh, at, least, at least if it was on pay-per-view or something, I could understand. It's very strange because AEW has this obsession with long matches. You know, everyone's got to get their shit in. Everyone's got to look strong. Okay, that's fair enough. But can you imagine if Volta had gone, I don't know, 20 minutes with Drake Maverick on NXT? People would have lost their shit. Drake Maverick took Volta 20 minutes. <laughs> like everyone lost their... Now, admittedly, it's a bit of a bad sample size because there's not that much of a size disparity between Sidell and Kenny Omega. But I mean, in principle, you know, a big star versus, with all due respect, a scrub or a, a mid-carder. You know, Matt Sidell is a great talent, like I say, but... He's just Matt Sidell. <laughs> you know, they, they haven't put him in a prominent position where I'm supposed to give a shit about him. So, ultimately, when I watch this, I think, eh, it's what it is. But it was a fine match, nonetheless. And I was a little bit surprised at how inoffensive Kenny Omega was, for the most part, during this match. I was just like, this is actually what I like about Kenny Omega. When he just comes out and has a good match, can do without the ridiculously over-the-top entrance. I just fast-forward it. I have got time, mate. I've got life. Got a foster dog to look after now. I've not got time to be sitting here going, oh, yeah, great, two, two, three, four, four, five minutes. Fucking hell. It feels like that entrance has been created solely to get Justin Roberts, the dapper yapper, over. Hey, he delivers it well, but I just don't give two hairy fucks, sir. I just don't. Crack on, mate. Most boring world champion in the business right now. I actually maintain that opinion and I'm not shifting off of that ground. Find me a champion, a world champion, that's more boring than him. And if anyone says Rich Swan, I'll slap you in the face because Rich Swan knows how to cut a promo, unlike Elton John over here, who took 15 minutes to get to the freaking point on Tuesday night and ended up fucking costing me valuable dinner time. I never understand what's going on with AEW. So I've just seen Matt Seidel take Kenny Omega, what, 15, 20 minutes, you know, taking the distance. Great match, admittedly. And then we have Hangman Page versus Cesar Bononi. And I'm thinking, okay, cool. Well, Cesar Bononi is a fucking unit of a lad. He's huge, by the way. Shout out to him. I heard he's got some personal problems. And I really hope those resolve themselves very, very soon. And if you check out his social media, you can possibly help him out as well. I know there's been some family issues. So best of luck and much love and prayers to Cesar Bononi at this time. But as far as his match went, I don't understand why he had to lose in two minutes to Hangman Page. Love Hangman Page. He's... He feels like their biggest young star. And she's funny because when I first started watching AEW, I thought he was so boring. And now he's arguably one of the most interesting guys I'm watching. I do flip and flop sometimes. I used to think Vin Balor was the most boring entity ever. Now I can't get enough of him on NXT. Um, you know, I am happy to admit utterly wrong about Hangman Page. Although in my defense, 
when he first hits up at AEW, you've got to admit, he wasn't nearly as entertaining as he was now. So I will give Kenny Omega a small semblance of credit for allowing him to be an absolute lunatic in that tag team title run, because that's kind of why we have the Hangman page that we do now. But I don't get why he needs to run over Cesar Bononi in two or three minutes. Like I say, it, what's the point? But there must be some indie guy floating around with his boots on that you can throw out there and say, hey, do you mind going out there and having a three-minute match with Hangman Page? Great exposure for you, but ultimately he's going to give you a bit of a waffling. No problem. Instead, they roll out this guy who, you know, isn't overly recognisable, was in the WWE system for a while, but he's an absolute tank of a man. He looks the business. He looks a million dollars. What I don't get is you're happy to push him, but AEW fans are always screaming about, oh, yeah, we push our own stars. What, Matt Seidel? <laughs> Matt Seidel got 20 minutes with a world champion. This guy gets three minutes with an up-and-coming possible number one contender later down the line. Okay, fair enough. Here's what it is. A little bit of promo time in between. Lance Archer cut a gorgeous promo. He is so underutilized. Why is he not wrestling every week? Sort your shit out. He's one of the best big men in the world. Get it together. Apparently, he's going to wrestle Sting. No thanks. No thank you. <laughs> Uh, Britt Baker cut a great promo, went on a little bit, but I love her cadence, I love her delivery, she's really good at being a bitch, I genuinely think, oh would you shut up you tart, and that's what I'm supposed to think, that's what I'm supposed to feel, but she's fantastic at her job, I really like Britt Baker, more so as a character than I do as a wrestler, I still think she's got a little way to go, just my personal opinion, my personal tastes, she can be a little bit botchy. But overall, good stuff. Like the primer. Nothing wrong with it, really, if I'm being honest. Uh, the Pinnacle wrestled a bunch of scrubs. Um, I've seen people saying, oh, AEW makes big stars. These three are not stars. Griff Garrison is not a... He looks like a gigantic poodle. He does. He looks like a giant poodle. So we had a giant poodle, uh, a couple of lads who look like they have never seen the sun, uh, taking on the three members of the Pinnacle. FTR, the best tag team in the world, or most definitely one of the best working tag teams in the world, no question. And Sean Spears, sporting his lovely blonde mohawk, and they dispatched them after a pretty decent effort. Uh, the one spot that I actually really enjoyed in this match was when Wardlow got in the way of their suicide dive, and he just kind of stood there like, no. <laughs> There'll be no jumping for you because you're a bunch of scrubs. Now, obviously, they eventually dispatched them, and then we get a fantastic promo again from the pinnacle a few of the members um i think it's uh i can't remember what his name is now is it dax uh he cut a decent promo uh, and obviously mjf completely berates tony shivani which i'm here for because tony shivani is utterly shit at this point i'm sorry he is an awful commentator and he is just an awful awful interviewer as well he's just so fake and so just insincere in everything he does. I appreciate the fact he took MJF to task, because a good human being would, but MJF was like, hold this microphone, now shut the fuck up. And Wardlow's like, you got a problem, bruv? <laughs> I like the way they're using Wardlow. He's just there to intimidate people. That's what he should do. He's massive. Absolutely massive. Great promo, once again. Good stuff. Can do without the match, though. Don't really care about watching a bunch of pasty jobbers and a giant poodle uh, trying to take on... The biggest faction, or at least the most hottest faction to date. And of course, they continue to call out the Inner Circle, who I'm sure will be back soon enough to cause a massive pay-per-view ruckus. So I'm expecting the next pay-per-view to be quite a lot of either... It's either going to be one huge match, Inner Circle versus the Pinnacle, or we're going to get a lot of separate matches. Because I noticed FTR name dropped Santana and Ortiz, MJF name dropped Chris Jericho. I'm sure Wardlow and Jake Hager can have at it again, and I... Absolutely have no doubt that Sean Spears and Sammy Guevara could be quite good for both guys, actually. I feel like it might help them a little bit because I feel like Sean Spears is definitely the the other guy in the pinnacle. And I feel like Sammy Guevara has an opportunity here to reconnect a little bit. And working with a guy like Sean Spears, he can help bring him up a level as well because I feel like Sammy Guevara is definitely more over than Sean Spears. I don't think it's unfair to say that. The show did tail off for me a little bit after this. Cutie Marshall, who looks like a giant onion with a haircut, if I'm being honest, he comes out and cuts... Oh, my God, he goes on and on about how un underappreciated he is. And, oh, I put in all the work, whereas Cody gets to just go home and... The thing is, you're thinking, okay, fair enough. Is Cody going to come out, maybe slap him around the face, sort your shit out, mate, stop being a whingy bitch? No, Cody comes out, he's got his arm in this thing, and he says, you want an exhibition match with me? Cool, let's just have an exhibition. Okay, awesome, sounds good. See you next week. Okay, cool. What the fuck was that? No animosity, you know? He's, he's just insinuated that you don't put in the work, that he does, and you just go home and chill out with your wife and... 
you know, create horrible reality TV series that I will never watch. Just saying. <laughs> okay, fair enough. That's it. Thanks for coming, QT Marshall. By the way, Cody. Um, it's really funny because when he was in a strong position, he was challenging Jericho for the title and he seemed to be in a very main event prominent position. I actually loved him. You know why? Because he deserved to be there. He's one of your best looking stars. He's easily one of the best promos in all of wrestling. He's actually fantastic, Cody Rhodes. I think he's one of the best all round wrestlers in the world. I really believe that. Here he is just fucking around with the Nightmare Furniture. By the way, how many fucking factions? The Pinnacle, right? The Inner Circle. The Dark Order. <laughs> Come on, Team Taz. Apparently there's nothing wrong with Team Taz, although Brian Cage can speak for himself. <sighs> what? W why? Not to mention you've got sort of semi-factions, you've got Triangulo de la Muertes, you've got um, the Young Bucks and their gang with Brandon Cutler, you've got Kenny Omega and the Good Brothers, even, you know, John Moxie's teamed up with Eddie Kingston, what the fucking, what is this? A really shit knockoff remake of the Warriors. You'll get that reference later if you're under 30. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, no, I just I just didn't get it. I really didn't. Uh, the next match, however, I had my eyes on, and I watched this judiciously because I never miss anything that Ray Phoenix does and Penta because, in my opinion, they're two of the best ever to do it. I think Ray Phoenix is the best luchador in the world. I think Penta is number two. And apparently, number three would like to stake his claim, too, because here comes Laredo Kid to team up with him against the Young Bucks. And, oh, it's that guy, Brandon Cutler. I like Brandon Cutler. I think he's a good worker. Utterly devoid of charisma, with all due respect. The only time Brandon Cutler has been in the spotlight is when he basically shit on JR's opinion on Twitter. <laughs> it's the only time I've really seen anything useful out of Brandon Cutler. That's a shame, because I think he's a good worker, and I like his gimmick, actually. I like it. Well, at least I like his look. You know, he's got great ring gear. Love the Dungeons & Dragons. Thing. Play on it some more. Build up to it some more, you know? Have some promos where you're backstage or in the dark, rolling the dice for whatever reason. But instead, he's just like... Meh. Whatever. Whatever. My dog's off camera. You can't see him, but he's kind of literally looking at me like... <sighs> he's got the same look that I did. And do you know what? I thought, oh, this match will be paying anyway. And it wasn't. It was so stupid and botchy. And for the longest time, I haven't been that guy who just continuously bangs on about spots and flips and stuff like that. Because I actually quite like a lot of that stuff. I like a lot of different things that wrestling does. But this match definitely suffered from just not fucking slowing down and selling anything or getting any pace to it. And it pissed me off. Because, you know, it wasn't just the Young Bucks as well. It was the Lucha Brothers. They were making mistakes too, a lot of them. And I love the Lucha Brothers. I don't care about the Young Bucks. Um, I like to call them the Botch Bucks, personally, because I swear to God, every match they have, there's always some sort of mistake or sloppiness and, you know, broken flips. Um, they didn't work out that well with Brandon Cutler. They tried, like, an assisted melter driver or whatever the fuck they call it these days, and it just looked really tacky and really fake in places. And it just looked like they were going through the motions, and you could just see them sort of waiting for the next spot, and I can't stand that. Why are you waiting? At least, if you've got to wait for the wrestler to get in for whatever reason, or, you know, sell to the crowd. Sell out to everybody. Don't just stand there like, yep, next spot, please. Waiting for you to catch me. And for that reason, the match actually was a bit fucking dull. So, sorry to sound like an old man, but it was just a load of nonsensical flips. However, Laredo Kid, fantastic wrestler. Seen him before quite a few times. Obviously, being a AAAR fan, I would have seen him quite a bit. Great to see him on the North American circuit a little bit more. Here's hoping we're going to see quite a lot more of him. Um, I will say one thing, though. This did give me the highlight of the show when Kenny Omega came down, like the big bitch that he is, and then had a, ah, why, do I, why do I talk like this all the time? Ah, ah. Like he's literally on the edge of orgasm. Like, Don Callis is just off camera, very slowly edging his fucking bell end. <laughs> very strange. Um, he starts basically giving out to the Unbox and says, You chose Brandon Cutler over me? This is probably his best promo I've seen, actually. I think he's a terrible promo, but I didn't mind this just because he was such a whingy twat. And he did it the right way instead of being like, Yeah, okay, fast forward, which is what I normally do. And he's like, You chose Brandon Cutler? What's wrong with you? I just thought that's quite funny. Why would you choose Brandon Cutler or Kenny Omega or anyone else for that matter? Oh, God. Um, and the Young Bucks, obviously, you know, they just mug him off. This is your last opportunity to throw it up. <laughs> Mate, right? You're not even a proper Bullet Club. You're just a knockoff Bullet Club 
that is actually in New Japan right now doing decent business. And the Bullet Club's, you know, a glorified knockoff of the NWO, and they're a glorified knockoff of the Click, and it's it's just everyone just stealing each other's shit. Why don't you just dress up like Triple H and Shawn Michaels, yeah, and just call it a day, Young Bucks? Because that's basically what they are. They are a Cheap shit flippy parody of DX at this point. It's actually quite embarrassing. Stop doing this. Stop doing this. You know, I stopped doing that when I got out of school. It's not fucking cool anymore. These these boys need to grow up a little bit. Just, you know, running around playing cosplay wrestler. <sighs> you know, stop. You've got skills. You've got potential. You've got great looks. Why are you running around doing everyone else's shit and stealing it? Get your own shit. Jesus Christ. However... Uh, when the Lucha Brothers gave a double super kick to Kenny Omega and his mouth was bleeding and it just shut him up while he was on a microphone, that was genuinely one of the highlights I've seen of AEW in the last few months. I was like, yeah, I popped for that. I popped. You got me there. Marked out good for that. Good stuff, lads. Thank you for shutting up old poodle-headed Elton John because I ain't got time for it. What is it, by the way, with all this frilly hair going on, you know, with the Varsity Blondes and the, and the Kenny Omega and I'm sure there's other guys like, have an air cut for fuck's sake. <laughs> I'm just jealous because I ain't got any hair. That's all it is, really. Format of the show. Another couple of decent promos. Eddie Kingston and John Moxley backstage. Mwah. Good stuff. Very simple. Really like them as a pairing. Find them quite funny, but also quite legit. I know they can fuck shit up, and that's why I liked them. I thought it was really good. I did. I enjoyed that quite a bit, as to be said. Mob Bay, Jay Cargill. Oh, my God. She is so hot. So fucking hot. I, I love her. She's great in the ring. She's great to look at. She's just, she's everything. She is bae. Uh, Jay Cargill cut another great promo talking about Red Velvet. Really excited about these two. These two feel quite legitimate. Can we hurry up and get these two up in the upper echelons of your women's division, please? Because the women's division could do with some new stars. However, credit to them. Nyla Rose took on Tainara Conti. Speaking of ridiculously good to look at. Oh my days. <sighs> get a little bit flustered whenever I think of Tainara Conti. It has to be said. Um, yeah, great match, fucking great. Can we just acknowledge that Nyla Rose is one of the best workers this company has? I know that people are triggered because she's transgender and apparently that upsets people because, you know, they're dinosaurs. Um, it doesn't bother me in the slightest. Good for her. She self-identifies as whatever she wants to fucking self-identify as. It's quite as simple as that. Uh, it doesn't affect me and it doesn't offend me that she has a different lifestyle to me. And she had a great match and she put over Tainara Conti while looking fucking mega strong. Again, your women's division is excellent. Put it in more a prominent position. I would have thought after last week, you know, with that amazing street fight, that it would have paid more attention. But uh, back to the usual stuff. Just have the one women's match sandwiched in there right before the main event so everyone can go and take a piss. No, don't go and take a piss. Sit down and watch this. It was fucking great. Tenara Conti coming out looking legit. I think she's now 9-2 and two, and the rankings look good for her. Very excited to see what she does going forward. I've always said she's a megastar. Not just because she's hot and on a one-way trip to hell she is legitimate a black belt and she's a great athlete she's got everything you need to be a huge marketable superstar so if tony khan doesn't see that he needs a fucking slap around his goofy little face i can do without vicky gray at ringside though she sounds like an albatross that's been shoved inside a cockatiel's cage doesn't she ah! oh, jesus christ no thank you yeah. main event i love this i actually did i love this Credit to you. Uh, people have given me this sort of reputation where I shit on AW. That's simply not true. John Silver versus Darby Allen for the TNT title was fan-fucking-tastic. It's just a shame they had to ruin it in the end. So, the match is great. Loads of great high energy. By the way, John Silver is fastly becoming one of my favorite wrestlers. I love his style because even though he's smaller and he's shorter of stature, he's fucking jacked. Old Coke Strong John is back in the house. And the way Darby Allen sold for him... Darby Allen has well overtaken Dolph Ziggler, right? I don't want to hear anyone banging on about Dolph Ziggler being great at selling and the modern day Mr. Perfect anymore. This guy right here, this is the guy who sells. And I love the use of Dark Order at ringside because they're kind of like, even though they're still heels, they're very likable heels because of everything that went down with uh, Big John, bless his heart. And of course, you know, everything going on with the kids and the being the elite stuff and Hangman Page as well, who just had that lovely little moment backstage. Um, but it was great. It was really great. Great match. Stings at ringside, obviously, to help equalise things. And he gets in with the code red and a cheeky pin. But they can't just leave it at that and think, great, they should have done a little fist bump. Both of them look to the sky. Show's over. Great stuff. Nah. Let's get the Hardy family. What? Another faction? The Hardy family, mate. They jump in and it's TNT, WCW, go home schmoz. Why? You just... 
He just took the shine off a fantastic match. Also, Sting's out there as well. Come on. This is quite literally a rerun of an episode of Nitro. I swear down, bruv. It really is. That being said, overall, very good. Nothing too over the top or stupid. Ironically enough, the thing I was looking forward to most was the biggest letdown. The Young Bucks and Brandon Cutler versus Laredo Kid and the Lucha Brothers. Shame, but it is what it is. But overall, decent enough show. Liked it. Keeps me invested enough to watch next week. So, fair enough. By the way, I have no time for more reality TV as it is. I don't watch reality TV. That feels like it's very much geared towards women. And more power to you if you can enjoy that terrible crap. But I am not going to watch Brandy Rhodes and Cody Rhodes swanning around being douchebags and basically ripping off Total Divas, which is what it is. Or Miz and Mrs. Either way, take your pick. Don't care. Um, thank you very much for watching, ladies and gentlemen. Let us know in the comments below what you thought of this show. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Don't forget to check out our boys Rated R for Wrestling as well. Doing some great work over on their channel. And most importantly, look after yourselves in such a difficult time. I've been Aaron Nix, and I'll catch you very soon for more content from the WrestlePlug.